Welcome to this video on responding to reviewer comments, which is part of our series on publishing a research article. Reviewer comments can range from mostly positive to mostly negative and anywhere in between. Most reviews contain a good news, bad news structure, which is intended to encourage the writer, but can sometimes be confusing. So this would be where the reviewers tell you something good about your paper, followed by something that's quite devastating. And responding to reviewers' comments can be incredibly difficult, particularly if the, the suggestions are not clear. Of, you know, of all the parts of the writing and publishing process, this to me is the most difficult part of it because after you've crafted a paper to have someone come along and pull it apart is really hard to bear and many writers being reviewed for the first time are shocked at the amount of comments and requests that are made by reviewers but this really is part of the game and there's a lot of humor out there on social media particularly about reviewer number two who's seen to be the most critical of all the reviewers so if you do find yourself despairing go and have a laugh at some of the jokes that are out there and you'll realize that you're not alone in going through this process. So responding to reviewer comments is always difficult. Some reviewers are professional but others are not. You know I would suggest that you try and have somebody else interpret the comments with you, somebody that you trust to help you work through the comments so that you don't see them in an overly negative light. So all papers get comments. This is something you know you really need to realize is that there, there will never be a paper that will come back and the reviewers will say this is perfect. Sometimes the comments are brief and other times they can be pages and pages long. Take your time over the reviewer's comments. Don't just dismiss them out of hand. Don't get de um, defensive about your paper. Really listen to what the reviewers have to say. And I would group them into comments that are easy to deal with. So deepening explanations of concepts, adding references, providing contextual details, developing the methodology further. Those are things you can do fairly easily. And then look at the ones that are much more difficult to address. So gathering further data, if the, you know, the reviewers said your analysis didn't match the findings, or if they wanted you to substantially restructure the paper, or if they were questioning the so what of the paper, the significance of the paper, or if they didn't see how you positioned your paper in the literature. Those are much more difficult to address and will take a bit more time to think through. So here's an example of one reviewer's comments from a set of reviews that I received myself. And I'm going to, this is only one small portion of one reviewer's comments and I'm going to read it out. I am concerned with the overall alignment of this article, alignment of the introduction literature review, methodology findings and discussion. While the findings are strong and can add to the current literature base, this section does not seem to emerge out of or be aligned with the introductory sections of the paper. When reading the first part of the paper, I thought the paper was going to be an evaluation. However, I was pleased to see that it was indeed a research paper. I would recommend spending less time discussing the context of the pedagogy and future revisions. This will also allow you to focus more on reflective practice and narrative writing in the introductory literature review sections. There also needs to be more detail about the methodology used in this research project. The authors claim to use a constant comparison method to data analysis, but in the findings section, the authors report on report examples of narratives and patterns across the narratives, which indicates to me that a narrative approach was taken. For a constant comparison method, I would expect to see theme passages that explain codes and categories that emerged from the data, not cohesive narratives and discussions of the patterns across these narratives. More details and accompanying references concerning your data analysis 
procedure would help with these concerns. I suggest the authors include a theoretical framework. This would also likely help synthesize this paper and keep it from feeling fragmented. A theoretical framework would help develop a story for the paper and will give a common thread that can be weaved throughout the paper. It would be helpful to connect the findings with the pedagogy themes and how they are informed and related to the narratives. I believe that this paper has, potential, has the potential to truly cont contribute to the research literature. Tightening up the story of the paper would really help elucidate how this research contributes to our broader community. So after reading the reviewers' comments, which are really quite devastating, I'm beginning to think, is there anything right with this paper? The reviewers have suggested that the paper is not coherent, that it's unclear in terms of methodology, and that it's without a theoretical framework. So I could give up at this point, or I could get fixated on the fact that they didn't see it as a research paper. There are lots of points of disagreement here, um, but I would suggest that you work through all the comments and you decide which ones you agree with, which ones you disagree with, which ones you do not necessarily agree with, but could change without it having a major effect on the paper. And then there might be comments, they weren't in this review, but there might be comments that you can do nothing about. And these are usually those critical, hurtful comments. If you can't do anything about it, then just ignore them and leave them. And then what I would normally do is create a table and cut and paste the reviewer's comments into the table and have a column to explain how I've addressed those comments and what decisions I've made. So here's the example of the table where I've put the reviewers comments in the one column and the other column will contain my comments and my responses and I'm trying not to be defensive and I really don't want to get into arguments with the reviewers even though I may disagree with them so let's have a look at the first one so with this is the overall alignment problem my thoughts and you wouldn't put your thoughts in here I'm just doing this to show you my process my thoughts would be Okay, remove the descriptions of the context of the pedagogy and then edit the paper to align all the elements. So I do agree with the reviewers here. And the comments to the reviewer would say, we reduce the sections that describe the context of the pedagogy, page one to two, an overall edit of the paper for alignment has resulted in much more coherence. We introduced the research project in the introduction to remove confusion. So this requires a whole bunch of shuff shuffling around Re realigning and moving things and the page numbers indicate where we have addressed that in the paper. So in this comment which is about the methodology here I don't agree with the reviewers but I'm thinking to myself I think we provided more than enough on the methodology section but I can do this without it having a major effect on the paper and I remember that I actually cut this before because of the word count so is there somewhere else that I can cut to create space for, the, for an extended methodology? And we deliberately decided not to do in a, narrative, a narrative analysis. So I'll have to explain that to the reviewers. So my comments would be the methodology section has been rewritten to explain the codes and themes from the constant comparison method, page five to six. Although the data is in narrative form, we did not use narrative analysis. We found the constant comparison method to be rigorous and we've provided more details on this. Now in the actual comments that I sent to the reviewer, I had a whole section on why we didn't use narrative analysis as well. So now we come to the, the comment on the theoretical framework. And this is where I fundamentally disagreed with the reviewer because we, the whole paper was framed by a particular theoretical framework. But it made me think, why were the reviewers not able to see this? And it made me realize that perhaps it wasn't a theoretical framework they were familiar with. 
and then if that's the case we would have to explain it in a very different way so we'd almost have to start at the beginning and provide a context and that's what we did and you can see I've provided sources in my response here because I'm trying to provide evidence for this particular framework and you can see from the page numbers that we substantially changed the way we explained this theoretical framework so that the reviewers could see what what we meant by it it would be helpful to connect the findings and the pedagogy themes again here I thought we had done this but then when you think about it if they can't see it it's it's obviously not it's not obvious enough for them so my comments to the reviewers here in the discussion section of the paper we have added how the findings connect to the pedagogy and how these relate to the nar narratives we have rewritten this section extensively. So the final comment, I believe this paper has the potential to truly contribute to the research literature. My thoughts are, well, that's good to know because I was thinking abandon ship. But now that I look at the revisions, the paper does look much better. And I often find this, that the revisions make the paper better. And in some cases, the, re the reviewers have been able to show me what I wasn't able to see and substantially improve the paper. So the revisions can really help you produce something that you can't do on your own. So I would say to try and take that attitude to, to these revisions, no matter how hard they are. So some journal editors will request that you highlight the sections you've changed or provide a document with the track changes to actually show the changes. And sometimes reviewers will provide contrasting reviews where one will say great methodology section and the other one will say poor methodology section. And then you have to decide what to do. You know, as I've said before, if you can get someone else to read it with you and to interpret the comments. It's much easier to do it with a colleague, particularly if someone it's if it's someone you trust. And just to remember that even the most well-published productive writers have had terrible reviews. We've all been there. Your job is to manage the process and to get the paper published. So to persevere until that paper is published. So if your paper is rejected or the reviewer's comments require you to write a whole new paper, then make the decision or decide to find another journal and revise the paper for the new journal and resubmit. So always resubmit until the paper is published. We provided quite a few references here on the publication process because we acknowledge that this is a very difficult process for many people. So if you need to stop the video and have a look at these sources in more detail. Thank you for watching this video on responding to reviewer comments which is part of our publishing research article series.